Once they'd made their permanent home in the mountains, they by no means were the only ones that settled in there, but they were the most colorful, most influential. You had the other mix of the Germans who came here, and the Germans are known for their orderliness and, uh, you know, their rules for everything and building really staunch barns uh, out of material that will last. The Scotch-Irish, on the other hand, tended to be more footloose and fancy free. And the Scotch-Irish also were more hot-tempered than the Germans. And so when the Indians attacked, you wanted Scotch-Irish there because they were terrific fighters. But uh, it, when the Indians weren't there, the Germans were just as happy not to have the Scotch-Irish around. With traditional crafts like quilting, pottery, and metalwork, they furnished their homes and cooked their meals as they always had. But the tradition closest to their hearts was music. Music was especially important. It gave them comfort. It was something that they could do themselves. They could sing, they could play their fiddles and have a dance and invite the neighbors over. The most important instrument the Scotch-Irish brought with them was the fiddle. Small, portable, and plaintive. The old fiddle tunes were greatly beloved and passed along through the generations. Those were the kind of songs that Thomas Jefferson probably played his fiddle by. And they were handed down, the reels and the jigs and the, the airs and the beautiful songs. I was playing with the Chieftains one day, and I was playing this bowling technique, and, and Sean Keane from the group said, where did you learn that? And I said, from an old man in eastern Kentucky. He said, that's the way they play in Donegal. And uh, I was so flipped out, you know, to realize that that had come over here centuries ago. Along with fiddle music, many well-loved ballads made the long, hard trip across the ocean. In Scotland, I was dwelling. I fell in love with a pretty fair maid, and her name was Barbara Allen. As people packed up to make the journey to the New World, they had to leave almost everything behind. There wasn't enough room on the ship for anything, but there was enough room on that ship to memorize a few dozen songs. Singing those songs or playing those tunes made them feel uh, at home. You know, they had brought that part of their culture with them. Oh, mother, oh, mother, go dig my grave. Go dig it long and narrow. Sweet William died for me today. I'll die for him tomorrow. The ballads, of course, are basically narrative songs or story songs. Many of them go back in England as far back as the days of Shakespeare. You know, it comes from the troubadours in England, like 14th, 15th, 16th century. They traveled the country. They would stop at a farmhouse. They would write a song for the person who lived there. That's what they had to say about the troubadour. He always paid his way. They didn't say that he paid his way with a song, but he did for a warm bed and breakfast in the morning. We still kind of do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. We do, though. <laughs> Those songs didn't die off in the mountains. They stayed in the mountains. Many of these songs dealt with the same kind of archetypal themes that soap operas today deal with. Deception, betrayal, murder, and true love. Barbara Allen is the classic example. If your name be Barbara Allen. Later on, 
we began to get songs that dealt with topical subjects, especially as Americans began to take hold of the models of the old songs and create new songs around them. That's the only way you, you passed it down, was to write about it. If anything happened, if someone got killed, there would be a song wrote about it.